NBA Commissioner David Stern announced that the Board of Governors had voted to add four new franchises. The expansion committee originally recommended three cities, with Miami and Orlando battling for the final franchise. The NBA is taking bids from cities on awarding a new team. We know how phenomenal of a sports town the city of Seattle really, really is. Seattle will, will be one of those markets that will circle. Getting out of Seattle is a bad move. Everybody just assumes, oh, when the NBA expands, it's going to be Seattle Las Vegas. Do you see in the near future? Future, more expansion teams. I think it makes sense over time. In one week, the Lakers made more TV money than the Grizzlies did the whole season. There's no doubt there's a lot of great cities who are interested in having the NBA. I'm pretty sure we're going to turn back to expansion. It's been a long time since we expanded. The idea of the NBA expanding has always seemed very fun. And right now, it seems like a no-brainer. It certainly is always a concept that we've looked at with eager eyes. And as more and more comes out, it feels like the NBA is about to make the move. It feels like the NBA is about to expand to 32 teams. But trust me when I say, I love talking about the excitement of a new NBA team or two. Las Vegas and Seattle are the current heavy betting favorites to take on new NBA franchises, and we also have wildcard favorites such as Mexico City, Kansas City, Louisville, and Vancouver. Any of these cities could benefit big time from an NBA expansion. However, it's like I almost hate to say it, but what is not talked about is that NBA expansion certainly comes with a price. I think we can all agree. We only want the NBA to continue to grow in a positive and fun direction. We only want a product we want to root for. We want entertainment but did you know that after the years 1988 and 1989 the NBA felt like they were in a great place they added four teams to grow their sport only this no-brainer decision had huge ramifications the NBA took on more that they could handle and by 1996 the league's scoring average had dropped by more than 10 points per game fans were outraged by this understandably and things actually got so bad that in order to fix their new problem that was caused by expansion the NBA actually shortened the three-point line to increase scoring from 1995 to 1997 are we prepared for something like the NBA scoring average to drop by 10 points what's up guys Mike here and I want the NBA to expand I want to see two new teams in the league but also the more research I do for this video the more worried I get I came in here wanting to believe and I still do because if we're being honest I think the consensus is that people do want NBA expansion but if I'm being honest NBA expansion so far if we look at recent in history has gone horribly for all of us, including the fans. You may remember the now extinct Charlotte Bobcats, a team so bad that the color orange in my head is forever associated with losing on a historic level. We will get to them. We are going to get into a ton here actually because the NBA has expanded 11 times total and five times since 1980, which means we do have a lot of past history to work with when we ask some very important questions. Extinct franchises, scoring plummeting, we do not want this. But of course, with expansion comes some huge, huge positives as well. Without expansion, we wouldn't be here with 30 teams. And between 1966 and 1976, the NBA went from nine teams to 22 total as the league entered the post-merger era. But really, the question is, if the NBA had a 2023, 2024, or 2025 expansion draft, what rules would they have in place now? Well, in order to give us an idea of that, we have five expansion drafts that have happened from 1980 and on. And in all five of those drafts, we have have had roughly the same rules and those rules are that the other 30 teams would be allowed to protect eight of their players total eight is a very large number that we will get into. From there though, the two expansion teams would then take turns drafting from the pool of eligible players with only two rules. One, they can take only one player from a single team. So if the Las Vegas Lucas took Jeff Green from the Denver Nuggets, they could not also take DeAndre Jordan later. And two, there is no salary cap during this draft. So if a player like Ben Simmons and his massive contract was to be left unprotected, the Seattle Simmons could be born. Just kidding about the name, 
but Ben Simmons ending up on an expansion team could very well happen. The NBA also always gives a big time draft pick to each expansion team, but the range of that pick does vary. The 2004 Bobcats were given pick number four, and in 1995, Vancouver was given pick number six, and Toronto was given pick number seven. If I had to guess, I would say that because the NBA lottery is now broken down into the top four, we would see picks number five and six given out. That would be my guess. And to me, any pick in the four to eight range is fair. Those are draft picks that give teams a chance to hit on a legit young star, but also the Victor Wembenyamas of the draft, the players that the teams that, if we're being honest, just struggled an entire season to get. Those players are still up for grabs in the draft lottery. The expansion teams are not a part of the lottery. They are given draft picks after. At the end of the day, we definitely want potential young stars to build around, but again, it is definitely not fair for Houston Rockets fans to watch a team win around 20 something games and then the expansion team is given the number one pick. The real problem with the NBA's expansion rules and the dark truth I will say at this point is that if we take a look at the last eight expansion teams that the NBA has added, we find that in their first four years, they averaged 24 wins per season. Do any of us want to watch that? Do any of us want to watch a Las Vegas team that is averaging 24 wins the next four years? Las Vegas sounds very fun, but once you add that 24 win season, who's watching? And then if we continue on after that, even if we look at 10 years time, only one franchise, the Orlando Magic, were able to have a winning record in 10 seasons. I understand it should be a struggle for an expansion team to come in and compete, but I don't think this type of serious, tremendous struggle is doing anyone any favors. The goal is not to just add two teams, it's to add two exciting teams, it's to add two new exciting markets. Sure, Charlotte just rebranded as the Hornets, but Vancouver lost their team because of how bad they were. During their first four seasons as a franchise, the Grizzlies averaged 14 wins. It is no wonder that Canada pushed them out. After the NBA's last mass expansion, in 1994, the Los Angeles Times actually had a headline read. The NBA moves to eliminate ugly ball. That is what basketball was being called, ugly ball. None of us want ugly ball again, so how do we possibly fix this? Also, before we move on, it needs to be brought up. Hilariously, the change in shortening the three-point line did not work in any way. Teams ended up attempting about five more threes per game the very next season, but because a lot of the players were just not used to shooting threes as part of their regular offense, the league's scoring average actually went down by a full four points per game the next three years until the NBA gave up on this and moved the three-point line back to its original place after 1997. This actually happened. Three-point shooting was made easier, but somehow scoring across the board went down. Would the league have kept this three-point length if their experiment had worked? Possibly. And that would not have been good for basketball. So how does the NBA accomplish what we need here? An expansion that gives new life to the league, not a slog, horrible 24-win team that no one wants to go and see play. I'm sorry, Bobcats, but all I'm seeing is orange. Come on now. And we've heard the theory that the NBA is in a better place with its overall talent pool, but the eye test shows us in the NBA playoffs that several teams already are lacking depth. Several Several great teams. So I would say in order to make expansion teams more competitive out the gate, if we are going to be adding two more teams, I don't want to be watching a bunch of horrible losers. I think in order to make expansion teams more competitive, I think the NBA should give each team a year notice that an expansion draft will be taking place. And then they should follow the rules of the disaster draft. In the event of a disaster where a significant portion of an NBA team tragically passes away, the NBA franchise that was affected would be able to draft from a pool where teams can now only protect six players. That is a pool that is much, much better, and I will show you that difference right now. With a pool of only six players protected, going through each NBA roster, if two new expansion teams were added, they could end up with lineups that would look like the following. Keep in mind here, I went and played GM with each team and protected six players from their final 2023 roster. For instance, for the Hawks, I protected Murray, Trey, Collins, Hunter, Capello, and Okongu. So someone like AJ Griffin might be able to be Take it. Same with Sadiq Bey. Overall, running through a simulated draft with six players protected for a simulated Las Vegas team, we could have Dennis Schroeder and Alex Caruso starting alongside Kevin Herter, Obi Toppin, and Jacob Podol, with young prospects such as Moses Moody, Jackson Hayes, Nikola Jovic, Mark Williams, and Jalen Smith. Meanwhile, for a Seattle team, we could be looking at Ricky Rubio and Bruce Brown starting, along with Luke Kennard, Bol Bol, and Andre Drummond, and then they could have young guys like Kai Jones, Lonnie Walker, and Jose Alvarado. Protecting only six players 
means teams would have to make some really hard choices, but overall, do these projected rosters seem overpowered or unfair? I feel like they would give us what we'd all want. Nobody's real current roster would be destroyed in the current NBA, and we'd have two somewhat competitive expansion teams with some real young talent there. Imagine a scenario where every single player I just named on these simulated teams was protected. The talent level below that is really just not great. And we have seen in the past that it can get very ugly very quickly if teams are forced to draft from that talent pool. So I'm hoping, I am hoping we do switch to six players. We will see. I do want to know what your guys' thoughts are down below. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you are new, make sure to subscribe and turn on post notifications so you never miss a video like this. If you're already subscribed, thank you so much for supporting. You are awesome. We all know it. And as always, have an awesome day and cue that music. If you're still here while the music is cued, here are two videos I think you are definitely going to enjoy. I mean, personally, I think the one on the left might be more your style, but the one on the right looks pretty awesome too. Click one, let me know what you think. And again, have an awesome day.